Welcome into the Lakers Report. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. Today's show is presented by Aura, an all-in-one digital safety provider. Protect your identity and everything else you do online with Aura. We've got a 14-day free trial for you guys to check out. Aura.com slash chat sports. We'll tell you more about the benefits of them later on in the show. Let's get into some trade rumors around the Los Angeles Lakers as Buzz continues to circulate around several players, and of course the coaching search is ongoing, so that's coming up here on today's show. But first, we have a trade-focused mailbag coming up later this week. So here's what I want you to do. Send in your best trade ideas in the comments right now. What do I mean by a trade idea? Don't just say, trade for, you know, Zach Levine. Say, hey, send... Anthony Davis in a first-round pick for Zach Levine and Patrick Williams. Like, specific ideas for each team getting something in return. The best ideas get on the show, so keep that in mind. Come up with some juicy trade ideas down in the comments section. Let's get to the latest around Russell Westbrook. The Athletic reports that the Lakers do not want to include a first-round pick if they trade Russ. This has been circulating for a while. This is apparently you know, what was being reported at the trade deadline as well, why they didn't flip Russ. They don't want to also have to give up a first-round pick. Here's Jovan Buha of The Athletic. He reports this. Teams have been demanding the inclusion of at least one first-round pick to take take on Westbrook's massive expiring contract, according to league sources. Rival teams know how much of a public train wreck last season was for the Lakers, and they're not looking to do L.A. any favors by helping them off of Westbrook's contract. Rivals believe Los Angeles have to trade him ahead of training camp because if the situation is untenable, especially after Westbrook's exit interview, comments deflected blame towards LeBron, Anthony Davis, and the rest of the franchise. But the Lakers don't subscribe to that theory. As of now, they have no intention of using a first-round pick to facilitate a Westbrook trade, according to league sources. Puha also added this. It's not merely a bluff or tactic to try to regain leverage in trade talks. That may be an ancillary motive, sure, but league sources, there is a sentiment along some with, uh, among some, excuse me, within the franchise that the right coach and a better supporting cast could smooth over Westbrook's awkward fit with James and Davis. So let me just ask you guys this, and then I'll give some thoughts. Do you believe in this trio that's currently constructed in Los Angeles? LeBron, AD, and Russ. Do you think it can work? Because last year, it did not, despite them missing a lot of time due to injuries. Type Y for yes. Type in for no. Can it work? Get your votes in down in the comments. The evidence would suggest that it cannot work because they did play 21 games together, which isn't a lot, obviously, but it's not nothing. 11 and 10, very average. Uh, scored a decent clip, almost 112 points per game. Problem is they gave up almost 113 a game. The defense was not there. We know Russ doesn't play defense. AD's good, but not what he was. LeBron can defend still at a high level, but at his advanced age, he can't lock in for 48 on that end. The net rating together, minus 3.5, so below average overall. Again, I've said this, and I'll say it again. Russ overall played okay from a statistical standpoint last year, and that was even true with LeBron and AD, 17 points and over seven assists. The problem is is the decision-making, the fit is clunky. I didn't like that from the beginning because we know LeBron needs to have the ball in his hands to facilitate. So bringing in Russ, who's not a catch-and-shoot guy, uh, he's going to have to have the ball in his hands. And then, okay, you're going to make LeBron an off-ball player full-time? That doesn't make sense either. Uh, now, obviously, these guys missing time, especially AD and LeBron, isn't ideal because we didn't get a huge sample size of these guys playing together. But 11 and 10 over 21 games and a negative rating overall, that's that that's enough evidence to tell me that you can't run it back with this trio. That's just not a good idea. I don't believe this trio works. I don't think it can work, to be honest. Maybe if LeBron was five, six years younger, he could make it work. But at 37, 38, do you really want to even make it try to work? Because I don't think it makes sense to run it back with Russ and waste another uh, year of LeBron's career or at least risk wasting another year of his career. Just my opinion, but hey, you know, we can agree to disagree. You got to keep one or pick one here. Type T if you want to trade Russ and a first, or just keep them. Type K if you rather keep Russ and the first. 
Tough options because you're giving up an asset on top of Russ, but I'd still probably do it to try and maximize the career of LeBron James. Let me know, type T or type K. Now, we told you guys our show is sponsored by a new sponsor today. That is Aura, which is an online digital safety protection provider because, guys, I don't know if you've paid attention, if you've ever uh, gotten online. We do everything online, and hackers are prevalent. You want to protect yourself with your online banking. Financial fraud protection is offered with Aura. You want to protect your identity. My identity has been hacked or almost hacked a couple of times. It freaked me out, got going with Aura. We're good to go there. Online device security, passwords for social media. I lost my Twitter in college, had to create a new one. At the time, not a huge deal because I only had about 150 followers. Now it would be a huge deal because I have almost 4,000. I don't want to deal with that, and I don't have to deal with that anymore. They've got family plans to protect up to five people on those plans as well. And we got a deal for you guys, 14-day free trial. Get going. You can test it out. I promise you, you'll be a fan of it. And if you're not, you can cancel. No big Big deal, no harm, no foul. Go to aura.com slash chat sports. That link will be in the comments and in the description. Protect yourself online with Aura today. All right, let's get to some off-season stuff as well. Dream off-season target, according to Bleacher Report, as they picked one for every single team. And guess what? It's a familiar face. Buddy Heald is who Bleacher Report listed for the Lakers. My oh my, how things could have been different had they simply taken that Kings trade offer instead of the Wizards trade offer and choosing Russell Westbrook over Buddy Heald. But maybe they can correct that wrong this offseason. Here's Zach Bach, uh, Buckley of Bleacher Report saying, could the Lakers aim higher than Buddy Heald? Sure, but only if they dangled Anthony Davis. Perhaps his injury issues could push them in that direction, but they won't find a better player in return than a healthy Davis who's been a top five NBA talent. If LA instead plants a summer blockbuster around Russell Westbrook draft picks, then it needs to find players who better complement LeBron. A net shredder such as Buddy Heald would be perfect. Historically, James has done his best work when surrounded by a swarm of shooters, which makes it all the more head-scratching why this front office has not acquired more of them. Heald could help correct that imbalance in a hurry, which I agree with and which is why myself, Chase Sr., and others here at Chat Sports said last year, why would you choose the Russ trade over Buddy Heald? Sure, in a vacuum, Russell Westbrook has had a better career than Buddy Heald, but he is not a better fit with LeBron, not even close. Buddy Heald, just catch and shoot threes for this team. You don't think LeBron finding Buddy Heald on the weak side in the corner, he'd shoot 42% from three if he played with LeBron, yet they opted for the ball-dominant Russell Westbrook. It was a bad call at the time. Maybe you can get Buddy Heald now. I would be a huge fan of that. He's got long history of being a really good three-point shooter at a high volume in this league, and that's playing for bad teams. Imagine if you played for a good team. I think those percentages would go up even more. They had their chance last offseason. Maybe they got a second chance here. We'll see what happens. Obviously, Indiana's in an interesting spot. They might be willing to trade a Buddy Heald if they get some future young assets. Would you try to trade for Buddy? Type A for yes. Type B for no. Let us know in the comments. Would you make this deal for Buddy Heal, A for yes or B for no? Now, coming up here in just a moment, Buckley also mentioned Anthony Davis is a treat as a dream target for the Chicago Bulls. So we'll kind of explore what that could look like if the Lakers ship out AD to Chicago. But before we get there, hit that sub button. We're almost at 45,000 subscribers, just over 500 away to get there. Producer Sam Brown trying to get there uh, before the NBA Finals come to an end. So help us out. Hit that subscribe button. More Lakers news, rumors, the coaching service is ongoing. We have it all covered here on the channel, youtube.com slash Lakers TV. All right, back to Buckley as uh, he wrote this article for Bleacher Report. So the Bulls dream offseason target, Anthony Davis, according to him. So he had this to say, after clearing 76 games over the past two seasons combined, Davis may have it torpedoed his trade value. At least that's according to Stephen A. Smith. However, other absorbers... Uh, observers, excuse me, aren't nearly as convinced the league would turn up its nose at an available AD. If the Bulls think they need more healthy versions of Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso to contend, they can put some prime trade assets in play to broker a blockbuster. Packaging Nikola Vucevic with Patrick Williams is one option. Orchestrating a sign and trade with Zach Levine is another. I'll be honest, I would heavily consider 
an Anthony Davis for Zach Levine straight-up trade. Uh, two years ago, I would have never said that because AD, one of the best two-way uh, bigs in the last 20 years, went healthy. But the last two years, he hadn't been healthy, and quite frankly, his play has dipped a little bit as well. He's still a really good player, but he's unreliable with his health, and he has not been what he was the year they won a championship. That is just a fact. Uh, if you agree with me, cool. If not, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, that's what the numbers say. That's what the, uh, my eyes tell me as well. That first year when they won that title, he was fantastic. Last year, can't stay on the court. Year before that, couldn't either. And when he did, numbers were down as well. So, Levine for AD, I might, <laughs> you know, I'd heavily consider that. Now, what I do, Vucevic and Patrick Williams, I like Patrick Williams. I'm kind of down on Vooch. I did not like how he played this year for Chicago. So, I probably would t uh, steer against that one, but – Look at the numbers, guys. I mean, the amount of time this guy has missed for Los Angeles, just it's unreliable. I mean, it's Chris Stepps Porzingis territory. He played more than AD last year, and that is never a stat you want to be uh, in the mix with. How confident are you that Anthony Davis will stay healthy next season? Scale from 1 to 10, 1 being not confident at all, 10 being very confident. <laughs> Three? I mean, what what uh, evidence do we have that he'll play 70 out of 82 games? Uh, not much at all. Appreciate you guys watching. Get your votes in on this one. Of course, subscribe. We'll have more videos to come here on the channel. We'll see you soon here on the Lakers Report.